You are now watching The Lone Blown. Blown! Yo, what's poppin' YouTube? Welcome back to The Lone Blown. I'm The Lone Blown, aka Zach Lesage, and today we're gonna be going over the new It Control deck. So basically, Control's been falling out of our meta for a minute right now, but it kinda hopped up at the $3,000 GG Tour Chill TCG Cup number three. Um, so the person who came second with the deck out of nowhere is Procyon Killer from Italy. I'm not sure if they're the ones who created the deck or if they're just the pilot or maybe they're the pilot and the creator. Let me know in the comments below if you know. I wanna just give the correct shout out if possible. I know that we can fall into issues like that sometimes, but super cool concept. I mean, I've seen it floating around on the ladder a little bit before um, and I've seen it floating a little bit afterwards. So that's why I kinda wanna create this video. Um, I'm not an expert on control. I did come up with a few control concepts like the Zoro control deck. I was the first one to publicly write an article about it. So I am knowledgeable about how to play control decks. I'm not super, um, I'm not a super expert on a deck like this, but I'll give you kind of my view exactly on how I would play this deck on the list that it is. I don't know if this is necessarily the best list, but this is the list that came second. So let me know if there's any change that you want to make in for the deck. The deck list, of course, is below in the description if you want to get that. If you're missing any of the cards for that deck, any of your other decks, or your collection, go to ptcgostore.com, plug in code ZLASSAGE5, and of course, you can always subscribe to the channel just by clicking the subscribe right there. Currently on the road to a 1,000 subscribers. Let's get there, peeps. Anyways, let's look into this deck list and see what's popping. So you might look at a deck like this, and you're like, yo, Zach, uh, there's literally like, there's... Your, your, your Eternatus deck, for example, had two lines. This deck is uh, almost at five lines. So double the amount of cards. And that's because you can continuously get cards back with Munchlax's Snack Surge. So Munchlax is kind of the basis of this deck. You can use Snack Surge to get cards back, um, cards that you need in any particular matchup. And before we continue, a deck like this is very matchup based. Um, there's a lot of different avenues that you can go through in different matchups in order to play the matchups correctly. At its core, the deck wants to use Absol and with its Dark Ambition ability that gives basic Pokemon more retreat cost. Along with Galar Mine, the retreat cost of both active Pokemon is double colorless more to stop your opponent from doing things. So you want to bring a Pokemon up into the active position and just make sure that that Pokemon stays there, making your opponent immobile. So what else can you do at that point? How can you stop what your opponent's doing in here? Well, if they attach energies, you can use Crushing Hammer to take away their energies. The Crushing Hammer, like if they attach an energy and try to attack, you can keep on using Crushing Hammer over and over again to stop what your opponent's doing. You could play other cards as well to further stop your opponent. So if your opponent's trying to draw two prize cards, for example, you could use Giovanni's Exile to take Pokemon that are worth extra prize cards off your bench. If your opponent has a Pokemon on their bench that you want to bring up, you could use Boss's Orders. If your opponent only has one active Pokemon in play that's doing a lot of damage for a single energy or something like that, you could use Wondrous Lab to stop them an extra kind of set while you just remove their energies. Well, what if your opponent is playing around the Wondrous Lab, things like that? You can also use Mawile Jicks to bring a Pokemon down from their hand. But wait, what if they've already... What if they don't have a Pokemon card in their hand and they've already discarded all of them. You can use Surprise Box to put it back in their hand. So there's a lot of ways for you to trap exactly a Pokemon that you want in your opponent's active position. And they can switch out, but wait, there's more. There's Alolan Muck and Scoop Up Net. So you can keep on discarding the top cards of your opponent's decks to eventually hit their resources like Switch so that they can't use them over and over again um, to get out of this lock. How do you set up? You have uh, Snorlax's Gormandai's ability, which allows you to drop until you have seven cards in your hands. You have Oracorio GX, which allows you to draw cards when one of your Pokemon were knocked out, including a Lily's Pokedol. You could stall with a Lily's Pokedol in the active, just vibe out there while your opponent tries to get damage off or attack. Meanwhile, you're in the back just using Munchlax. Depends if you need to draw cards or if you just want to sacrifice stall with something up in the active spot. If your opponent has special energies, you can use Gyratina here. Gyratina would be a really good choice to take some special energies away. Um, and Apom, uh, an underutilized card, Yanko, you can discard random cards from your opponent's hand until they have five cards left in their hand. So if they're just trying to kind of um, run the timer down or bring the game to a tie, Apom allows you to use Yanko once your opponent has a large hand size and take away a lot of cards in their hand. So you could use that in order to kind of stop your opponent. If you're behind on prize cards, 
which most times you will because you're not really drawing prize cards, the Lieutenant Surge is an option. If your opponent has a Pokemon, one of the best single prize card attacking Pokemon is Spiritomb, you can make them poison so you can maybe knock out that Spiritomb. Or you can confuse your opponent's Pokemon to kind of um, put it at a 50-50 chance of them getting the attack off successfully or not. Um, Cynthia Caitlin allows us to get back some of our supporters. Capture Energy allows us to search out Pokemon. Will allows us to get ahead or Tails. I think we basically want to get heads, but if we want to get the guaranteed crushing hammers or anything like that, we could use Will to make that happen. Bill's analysis allows us to search out some stuff. Birdkeeper is a hard retreating option for our deck. Um, Ordinary Rod can get stuff back. Palpad can get stuff back. Pokecom and Quick Ball will allow us to get things. If our opponent has a small hand size and a lot of prize cards, you could reset stamp to potentially deck out your opponent, or you could just take their hand away um, to try to rip it if it gets too big. Maybe you don't. Maybe you can't use a palm that turn. Um, I mean, I think that's basically everything in the deck. Like, there's just a lot of answers to what you could be playing against your opponent. And I mean, I'm not trying to breeze through this deck and be like, look, this deck has a lot of answers to a lot of Pokemon, has a lot of answers to a lot of decks, but. There's a lot of decks that are not well equipped to play against this. So let's say if you were playing an Eternatus V Max deck and you went in with an Eternatus V Max to start attacking with these Pokemon or start attacking your opponent's Pokemon, well, they could drop a Wondrous Lab in play when you don't have a counter to Wondrous Lab. A lot of um, these Eternatus lists do not play any stadiums. So they could drop a Wondrous Lab, you could go with the Eternatus V Max, then they could go Crushing Hammer and loop Crushing Hammer over and over again with will so that you will never be able to attack the game and then you just have an eternatus vmax in the active spots and you're like okay cool what do i do now maybe i'll try to pivot and bring something boss's orders bring it back up boss's orders bring it back up um if there's no two prize card pokemon that you're knocking out you're often going to be in a very good position with a deck like this and it also has to go with um knowledge in general this is a fairly new deck towards our metagame um a lot of not a lot of decks have seen success um, like this recently. So a lot of players um, who might have joined the game recently or a lot of players who haven't necessarily played against this deck, they're likely not going to play against this deck correctly. So I think that's what led to Procyon Killer um, coming second at the large events. A lot of players were just not well equipped to play against this deck and it really showed um, kind of by coming second. So in the goal of this video is to play a couple games, maybe two, maybe three, depending on how long the games are, however they go. I just want to showcase some cool games on how this deck can work. Um, do I think this deck is good? Honestly, I think this deck is fine. Um, probably not great in best of one. In best of three, it's probably a little bit better because you could win one game and then the game, it will go to the win in your favor unless you lose um, very quickly. So I think this game, is, can, this deck is very controlling of your opponent. And if, especially if you're a stronger player, it might be worthwhile to try out. Um, if you're looking to grow as a player in the game, this would definitely be a different mindset than most other decks. And it's a different win con than most other decks. Basically you win by decking out your opponent, um, or your opponent concedes after they have no resources, whichever becomes quick. I mean, you can't force your opponent to concede. I don't recommend asking your opponent to concede. I think those are all things that go against the spirit of the game. But a lot of players, like when I played against a deck like this, um, when I have no resources left, I just scoop because there's nothing else that I can do. So, I mean, however you're able to win the game, um, just by running your opponent out of resources and then they just draw out of their deck. That's really the win condition of this. You're not drawing prize cards. I don't think Koga's Trap is a viable way to draw prize cards. I don't think attacking with Apom's Tail Smash is a viable way to draw prize cards. Um, so that's not how it's going to work. It's really going to be a deck out um, running your opponent out of resources strategy here. So, I mean, again, let's jump into some games, see exactly how this deck whirls. Okay, so we're going to call the coin flip here. Uh, I just call Tails by default. It's fine. It's whatever. We'll see exactly what our opponent allows us to do here in this game. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if we got a few um, people who are conceding or stuff like that. It's one of those things where the, the games get a little bit awkward. This hand's a little bit awkward. Um, my opponent with some super cool Pyroar sleeves, but whatever. We'll see exactly how it goes. Our opponent's going first here. And the Sun Scorch VMAX is probably not the matchup that we want to see. Um, if anything, when it comes to this deck, this is actually the deck that um, Procyon Killer lost to in the finals. Ian Robb was playing this deck. Um, so for me, they play enough Giant Hurts to get around Galar Mines, things like that. So here, um, I think I might just go Galar Mine to get cards out of my hands. I think I'm going to go ahead and use... 
I think I'm going to use... I don't even know what I want to use here. I'm probably going to use Reset Stamp. Just to get cards out of my hands. Um, really, really, really awkward start. I'm going to put the Gyratina down. I don't see any reason why not to go Koga's Trap. Or actually, maybe I'll go Bird Keeper. Bird Keeper seems good. Then I can scoop up Net back. So now I can use a Bird Keeper. That makes a little bit more sense. So I can use Quick Ball here. Um, Quick Ball, I'm probably going to discard the Koga's Trap because they can always evolve. And Pokemon that I want to be playing down in this matchup are going to be... Uh, my game plan against this matchup is just to bring up one of my opponent's Pokemon that hopefully just can't get up. Reshazard would be pretty cool. Um, that's definitely a Pokemon that I try to bring up if possible. Um, maybe I could just rip a Pokemon out of their hand right now with the Mawile. I'm going to go ahead and do that. I just reset stamped them, so there's a very good chance I could just rip something here good. So we got a Sun Scourge V. Uh, our opponent definitely uh, has a pretty good hand here. Let's go ahead here, scoop up net the Gyratina. That's okay, we can always try to get rid of our Mawile GX, and let's go Gormandize. So we're going to draw in some more cards, we're vibing out here. But I don't think we're necessarily going to be able to take away my opponent's energies, we're not going to be able to use Wondrous Lab in this matchup, because they can continuously use G-Max Centiferno and attach back that extra energy. So now we're just kind of um, locked to our opponent's uh, G Max San Inferno. That's where the game's at. It's going to be a little bit awkward, but you want to know what? It is what it is. Um, the Crobat there is actually probably the best thing that could have ever happened to us. So, this is a Pokemon. There's no dark energy in our opponent's deck. We can use Galar Mine over and over again to bring up the Crobat V. So, this is where I'm really going to try to focus on. Um, Crobat, v, Crobat V seems like the Pokemon we want to bring up. So getting out Absols so our opponent cannot get out of the active spot. Now, the other issue is our opponent can attach up to three energies per turn, which makes it a little bit difficult, and that's Welder um, for two energies and then an extra energy. Uh, this Pokemon has a retreat cost of one, so I want to try to make the retreat cost at four at all times, uh, because they can get it. But we'll, tr we'll, we'll slowly try to run our opponent out of energies. We'll see if they know how, what they're doing in this matchup. And we'll see if our hand is capable of allowing us to win against this matchup. Um, so far, I don't know if it is or not. Again, it's w one of these things where I'm more so going from a theory-based standpoint. I think a lot of these decks require you to have a large, like, rounded grasp of what your deck can do. And then pinpoint based off the draws. Because I have no guarantee. I have nothing that's going to search things out here. Um, Heatran GX is definitely another Pokemon that we could we could worry about. Um, but they're hitting the 120. They're not knocking me out. They don't have an extra energy. It is what it is. Um, so let's try to go after the Crobat V to start slowing things down. Um, I could also go ahead here and... Yeah, let's go Crobat V. Try to slow things down. To me, that seems like one of the best things that I possibly can do. Because they will not be able to retreat, especially if I do this. If I do this. Um, there's nothing else that I really want to do beyond play maybe a Crushing Hammer. Um, I could Crushing Hammer away the Heat Energy for the rest of the game. If I can get a Heads. I also want to draw more cards with Gormandize because I don't really have too much going on for me. So I'm going to go Gormandize here. And I really want to put my opponent in a position where they kind of like struggle here. Um, and it's... The way that I mean by struggle, like our opponent might put down a Dedenne GX discarding other resources. One of the, it's kind of like quicksands. Um, not to say like I have a lot of experience in quicksand, but they say like don't don't overly react right away. Um, the more that you struggle, the quicker things are just not going to work in your favor. So see, our opponent's playing a research. You can see there's like a couple welders gone now. So some of their resources are just gone in this game. If our opponent is unable to find a switch. Um, that's another thing. We want to try to find a Galarian, or sorry, an Alolan Muck to try to discard some of these switching cards. Um, so here, what do I want to do? There's Quick Ball. There's not really much else that I want to grab with Quick Ball. Um, I think I want to go like Bill's Analysis more so than anything else. Because there's really not too much craziness that's going on here. So we're going to go Bill's Analysis. I'm going to go ahead and grab a lot. Of, oh, you only grab up to two. I thought it, I'm thinking it's like clay or something like that. I'm crazy. Um, I'm going to grab a boss's orders. And I'm going to grab like a Lily's Pokedoll. I think that sounds fine. 
Um, there's really nothing else that I could do with a hand like this. So I'm going to go ahead and go Snack Search. Um, it's my only option. I can't use Gormandize anymore. So we're going to go ahead and go Snack Search, Heads. And you only want to use Snack Search when there's a card that you want to put on top of your deck. Here, I just want to be able to get things out um, and just start kind of vibing with them. For me, I think that um, grabbing another Bill's Analysis might be really worthwhile. I can grab some more cards maybe. Um, actually, I could get that back with Cynthia if they don't get anything. Maybe Scoop Up Net is better because I don't have a Scoop Up Net in my hands. So that would be one way how I would decide this. Also, if anyone's here is currently playing the Players Cup 3, um, I was talking to my friend group. Um, this is a very poor choice, this deck here, for the Players' Cup 3. Each player only has 12 minutes on each side. So if your opponent just starts draw passing, um, it's quite often you will not come to a win condition in any capacity. So just keep that in mind if you're like, I think this deck's really cool, maybe I'll try it out for the Players' Cup. I don't think there's reasonably enough time for you to win the game. So our opponent might go for the Crobat Retreat. They currently have um, 4 Retreat cost. You can see our opponent's just building up the Senna Scorch. We just want to continuously bring, bring up the Crobats. Um, our opponent only can play four copies of Switch. Uh, we got to watch out for their giant hearths. So there's their energy. And they're probably like, why can't I retreat? They may, might not have realized the Absol or the Galar Mine. Um, so we got to watch out for Galar Mines here. Galar Mines is going to be very important. We want to continuously... I'm actually almost fine with that. Our hand wasn't great. Um, Galar Mine is something we might want to get back with Snack Search. Um, other turns. Um, our hand here is not the greatest. But that's okay. Let's see what we could do here. Um, I want to get a Pokemon that can have free retreat if they were to take away Munchlax. Um, let's go. I don't want to discard um, the Mawile, so I'm going to go ahead and put it right over here. To me, this seems... Actually, the Mawile, there's no switch, so yeah, I'll put it on the Mawile. That sounds fine. I'm going to go ahead and go Crushing Hammer. So that's going to take the energy away. Um, there's really nothing I want to put on top of my deck this turn. I'd rather just probably draw a few cards. Um, I don't want to put down Wondrous Lab because I really like the Galar Mine in play. But I will use the Wondrous Lab if I need to take away a Giant Hearth from our opponent. So let's go ahead and go Gormandize for a couple cards. Because um, at this point, nothing. our Snorlax is just going to get knocked out. Okay, so we got a Quick Ball. we got a Capture Energy. we got some things going on here. Uh, we definitely have some ways to go in this matchup. But there's our opponent's first giant hearth. So they will be able to retreat if they are able to find a welder. Now our opponent has played three welders. They haven't played an Eldegoss. And they play Cynthia Caitlin. That's an, that's an interesting tech. Um, back when I was playing fire type decks, um, there was a few moments where I would play Cynthia Caitlin to just get back some of my other resources. Um, it kind of was like a fifth welder. Um, so I thought Cynthia and Caitlin was cute there. But it might, if they don't have a switch, they might be in a rough spot here. There's a turbo patch. Turbo patch is definitely going to be interesting too. Um, it does give them a way to get back some of their energies. But they do have a retreat cost of two. So our opponent's finally going to retreat. Our Snorlax is going to get knocked out. So GMAX and Inferno for a lot of damage. Now, do keep in mind that the Munchlax does have free retreats. Um, make sure that there's nothing in play that's going to stop it. Like the Galar Mine does stop both active Pokemon. So let's go ahead here and send up the Munchlax. And see exactly what we could do this turn. So, I mean, for me, I think... The best case scenario, what we could do here, is put down an Oracorio. We could draw some cards, see what's popping. So let's go ahead, go Oracorio, draw some cards. We did get an Alolan Muck. Um, I wouldn't even mind just like hitting to see what our opponent has here. I don't think Surprise Box is necessarily going to do too much for us. So I'm going to go ahead and pass the surprise box away with the Cynthia and Caitlyn. I do want to get a boss's orders to bring back. So we do have a few scoop up nets, so we have a few ways to get around some things this turn. Um, I would like to use a Lolan Muck here to rip some of my opponent's resources away. 
So we got three of them. Um, the air balloon's definitely nice to rip away. Does this, uh, then shuffles the other cards back into their deck. So for here, um, the biggest thing that I probably want to do is go into a Lily's Poke doll if that's a possibility. So if I want to go into a Lily's Poke doll, I think I'm just going to go scoop up net onto the Gyratina, because the Gyratina is a Pokemon that I don't want to see there anymore. There's the Lily's Poke doll going down. You got to place it like a trainer, so it's a little bit weird. Um, I can take away my opponent's giant hearth so that they could play another one. I'm just trying to get the last stadium out there in play. I would like to get a Galar mine back. Um, at this point, I'd also like to go scoop up net again on my Alolan Muck so I can get my Alolan Muck off next turn again. So I'm going to go Alolan Grimer goes down. Again, there's not really much else that I want to play here. Um, I'm just going to go ahead here and go retreat into the Lily's Pokedoll, forcing my opponents to have a boss's order to take a prize card of their choosing. And then I'm going to go Snack Search. Um, if there's a Snack Search card that I want to get, it's going to be a Galar Mine here. So I'm going to go Snack Search. And there's my Galar Mine. So the whole plan next turn is to bring up the Crobat V. And just really stop my opponent from doing things. So we'll see. Our opponent might be able to play around this a little bit. They might just go Crobat V um, Welder onto it. Because they did get the Welder back. That'd be really, that would be a really strong play on their behalf. Um, maybe I could just bring up their Scourge V. Who are they going to power up here? Maybe I'll bring up their Heatran GX. That might be interesting. See, they're just powering up another Heatran V here. Um, which might be... Or their, their other Scourge V. Um, which I think is a mistake on their behalf. So there's their energy on the Crobats. Most of these lists play anywhere between 11 um, to 13 energies. So the fact that our opponent has 6, 7, 8 energies in play, um, 2 in the discard pile, and they keep on getting them back is also a little bit scary. So let's go ahead and go Munchlax. We do have access to the Galar Mine, but before we do anything else, let's see what we can get out of our deck by using um, Dance of Tributes. So I feel pretty good about the Dance of Tribute here. And in terms of Pokemon that we want to put down, we do have to sacrifice something this turn. Um, I am going to go ahead here and go Alolan Muck. Let's rip, see what we could rip here. So we ripped four of our opponent's cards there. And we go for like a nice little play here where we could bring up the Crobat V. So let's go ahead and bring up the Crobat V. Let's go ahead and go for the Galar Mine to stop the retreat. I don't know if there, before we play Galar Mine, I don't know if it's worthwhile for me to um, retreat or anything like that. I might want to just see what's in the deck. Um, I don't think Tool Scrapper might be a thing. I don't know if Will's going to be a thing. Um, I think I can discard the Bill's Analysis. To me, that seems like the correct choice. Now, in terms of things, maybe the Apom is something that I want to just use this turn. Um, I could see myself using Apom, no problem, this turn at all. Just start ripping out some of my opponent's hands. So, yeah, let's go Apom. make sure I retreat first put the Galar mine down into play I don't think there's any point of me playing reset stamp or anything else like that so I'm just gonna go ahead and go yank out try to take away some of my opponent's resources if they have anything good um, I don't think I grabbed anything good there and I don't know if that was even necessarily the best point to use yank out I'm just trying to stop my opponent's resources um, in general so so far you can see like we took away a lot of the turbo patches but our opponent might have access to a lot of switching cards um, but so far they've only drawn one prize card and have 13 cards left in deck they have a lot of their energies on Pokemon they have a crowbat in the active spot so the more and more that I just have um, act like time in this game the better the chance it is for me to win most games end in like four to six turns um or three sorry three to five turns um this deck takes a lot more time because it's just throwing a lot of obstacles so there's another switch there's the gmax centiferno at this point i'm kind of fine with that i could get another boss orders up here real quick 
Um, how many scoop up nets have I used? I have used two scoop up nets. Okay. So let's go. Um, Munchlax goes to the active. Because, I mean, I have another Munchlax anyways. Um, let's go ahead here and go for Mewtwo. I want to go Mewtwo. I want to put the boss's orders on top of my deck. Because I can always draw with uh, Oracorio. Which seems really worthwhile. So let's go dance a tribute. Draw some cards. And we got the boss back. Let's go ahead here. Go boss up. I mean, I think at this point we could probably even go boss up the Heatran. I don't think our opponent has enough fire energies left. And reasonably, I don't know what's in my opponent's deck. Um, I'd actually probably like to hold on to the reset stamp in case they were to knock out one of these other Pokemon. But now I'm just going to go snack search and see exactly what's popping. Um, so snack search, I think scoop up net is the best card that I could put on top of the deck. The reason why the scoop up net's better for me to put on top of the deck, if I need to get a boss's orders and my opponent knocks out a Pokemon, I could go Mewtwo put a boss orders on top of my deck. I could also go boss order, or I could also use Alolan Muck if my opponent does not do the same thing. And they have another Send of Scourge VMAX out there. So our opponent has two switches left um, if they play that many copies of Switch. And we'll see what Pokemon that they put down um, from this. If they go to Dene, there's, there's a very good chance that I could just deck out my opponents. Um, I don't know exactly where their other resources are, what they have left, um, but they also have to count the amount of cards that they have left in their deck. So, I mean, so far, so good. Um, it's kind of a really awkward deck. I don't know if our opponent's playing the most um, standard version of Scent of Scorch, but it is a very um, interesting matchup. And if our opponent passes, this is where we can kind of start controlling the game. We have access to those wills. Oh, they are going for the Dene. So now our opponent only has seven cards left in their deck. So there's the Giant Hearth. Galar Mine is definitely a card I'd like to get back. I could also bring up the Dedenne GX, depending on what it goes. Maybe our opponent will use Hopper and GX here for 50. I'm not sure. Um, our opponent currently has 8, 9, 10, 11, uh, 11 energies in play. There's their boss orders. Are they going to find a way to get the knockout here? Oh, they're just, they're just going to pass. Okay. So we have access to what we want. Like, we, we have access here. So let's go ahead and go scoop up nets. Let's bring back the Alolan Muck, because they might not have a lot of resources. We could actually see what's entirely in their deck at this point. So let's put this back down. And if there's a way for me to do this, I'd very much like to get a will. I can go Snack Search and automatically get it. And I'd like it to be a Heads. So, for me, now I can get back that Galar Mine. And I'm in a pretty good spot, as long as my opponent does not get a switch. Um, they did play a Boss Orders last turn, but I, I, I imagine my opponent does not have too many resources left. And if they just go pass again, we're going to see the remaining resource that my opponent has left in their deck. So, there's another energy. Got to be careful of this stuff. I'd very much like to get a Boss. Maybe Boss would have been better than Galar Mine. I'm not sure. I also can't be sure how many uh, Giant Hearth my opponent has played at this point. That's their second one. I'm actually completely fine with this. Um, if anything, that is one of the best things that could have ever happened. Okay. So now we have access to the free retreating Munchlax. Should be able to know exactly what's left in my opponent's deck just by using the Alolan Muck. So let's go ahead here and go for Alolan Muck. So they have a switch. They also have a Malolana. The Malolana is actually a terrifying part. Um, that part does not seem very good here. Um, I'd very much like to find a Lily's Pokedoll if that's a possibility in any capacity. Um, I'm going to go ahead, double check to see exactly what we have left here um, in our things. So I probably don't want to use Ordinary Rod right now. 
Um, I'm going to go ahead and use the Oracorio. If there's anything I want to pal pad back in, I'm not sure about that. Um, I think I want to get a boss back on top of the deck at some point. I don't... Like, our opponent has access to a lot of stuff here. Um... Because they could just top deck a switch and like be in a very good spot. So that means I would like to have. I can go Koga's Trap here actually I think. So let's go ahead and go Koga's Trap. Let's go Galar Mine. Because the Pokemon that I have in the active Pokemon active spot is the Pokemon that I want. Um, and then based off what my opponent has in their hands, I would just like to vibe out here. Try to get myself as many turns as possible. So I'm just going to go reset stamp there. And I think I just need to hope that my opponent uh, finds some Alolan and I can get a boss's orders going off at some point. That means I need to try to get a boss's orders back. Um, so I think Munchlax is going to be a very important card that I could put down at this point. I'm going to put Munchlax down. And then I'm going to go for Snack Search. It doesn't necessarily matter where I'm Snack Searching. Heads. Um, the boss orders to me I think is the best card that I could possibly grab. Because I think that might run my opponent finally out of resources. But we'll see exactly what our opponent can do. If they can go boss orders switch, um, I lose the game. But based off what they've played here so far, they've already played two bosses orders. They have Eldegoss. Um, they've played one copy of switch, two copies of switch, three copies of switch. It looks like their other switch is probably somewhere else. This is really bad. If they just go boss orders, bring me up with Oracorio. What are they going to grab here? Boss? Yeah, I really just don't know how to handle this at this point because our opponent... I need to be able to bring something up. So there's the energy. They won't be able to retreat because of Absol. And they're just going for the confusion flip there. So they have the boss in hand and they have access to Mallow Lana. Um, I'm very concerned about that for real. Um, I would I would like to go boss, bring something else up. Because they, they could have just... Well, I mean, I guess they could have boss and... They can't play boss and Mallow Lana in the same turn. So if they go boss, I'm probably really screwed um, in this game. If there's a way for me to put Bird Keeper on top of my deck, that'd be definitely... This is definitely the turn for me to do so. Um, I don't know why my opponent's saying hello. Um, yeah, so I think I just need to put Bird Keeper on top of my deck with Will in case my opponent plays boss beforehand. So let's go Will. Okay, let's go Will. Snack search, and then I'm going to go heads, and then I'm going to grab the bird keeper to put on top of the deck. So I need to hope here. It would very much put me in an awkward position if my opponent's able to find a switch. We might be able to, we might lose this game, but again, this is not the most favorable matchup as you can see because they have the welders, and our opponent is playing the Mallow Lana, and they are playing the Turbo Patch. So there's a lot of things that I just don't necessarily like about this matchup. Um, if our opponent goes Mallow Lana, I think we win the game. Um, if our opponent. Yeah, I don't think we could win the game at this point. Um. Because they have access to Mallow Lana at some point in the game. I don't think we have a way to rip the Mallow Lana out of their hands at this point. So let's go ahead here and maybe send up the Pokemon with the most retreat. Or the Pokemon that has the least, or the most amount of HP, I should say. Or actually, you want to know what? We haven't played all of our scoop-up nets. 
let's just send up the Oricorio. The Oricorio is probably the best thing that I could possibly send up. So I'm going to go ahead here and try to draw some cards with Dance of the Ancients. So that's step one. There is at least Poke Doll. So, I mean, our opponent has to get Boss and um, Malolon in the same turn. So, I mean, we're very close to winning this game. Um, so, I need to go Lieutenant Surge. Um, let's go Bird Keeper into the Lily's Poke Doll. Crushing Hammer. I'm going to try to Crushing Hammer it away from the active Pokemon. So our opponent would have to go Malolana this turn. And then they can't just go boss if they unless they play Switch already. So I mean, at this point, I don't know if it's worthwhile for me to play another supporter. I mean, I guess it's probably worthwhile for me to play a Cynthia Kaelin. So I could put a supporter card from my discard pile into my hands, draw three cards. Um, the card that I'm going to discard is probably just going to be a Grimer. And the card that I'd like to get back is probably just a Bird Keeper. Because that would guarantee me just getting out of any weird situation in case my opponent does anything weird. Um, the Scoop of Net here probably just does not matter. Um, the Pal Pad probably just does not matter. I don't see where Scoop of Net's going to save me or anything like that. Um, at this point, I don't see any reason why I just don't go Snack Search. Apparently, Heads is very good with Snack Search. Um cards that can give me a little bit of help here would probably be maybe another Lily's poke at all. So we'll see exactly how this game finishes off. I mean, this game has been going on for nearly a half an hour. Is my opponent going to have the switch in their hands? Because we did see the cards that they have in their deck with a Lolan Muck. We just don't know a few cards in our opponent's hands. So there's the Wondrous Lab. That part doesn't really hurt me too much. They still have a retreat cost of four with the Absol. There's a Malolana. And we'll see if our opponent, like, they can't get out of Fion. They should not be able to get a Fion. G-Max sent a Ferno. Perfect. Okay. So at this point, again, I'm just going to send out the Pokemon that has the most HP in case my opponent does anything crazy. I'm going to send up a Lily's Pokedol. I'm going to scoop up Nets. A Mewtwo. Because Mewtwo is something that I could reuse. I'm going to put down another Lily's Pokedoll in case my opponent somehow has a way to pivot between this. I am going to head and I'm going to... I'm, a, I'm going to go... Lieutenant Surge. Boss's order is this Pokemon's going to have the most retreat cost. I'm going to go Bird Keeper into the Lily's Pokedoll so my opponent can't draw a prize card. Even if they are able to find a switch, I'm going to drop, I'm going to use the Oracorio here. And don't get, don't worry that I'm going to go down to zero cards. I have ways to get cards back in the deck with uh, Ordinary Rod and Palpad. Now I'm going to play down Galar Mine. I have the boss orders in my hand for next turn. So I'm going to go ahead and go Palpad to put some cards back into the deck. Just go for Lieutenant Surge and Bird Keeper uh, because I don't have another copy of either one of those in my hands. I don't need to worry about the two cards left because I don't think my opponent's going to mill anything away. And I'm just going to go ahead and go Snack Surge to try to get it back another Galar Mine if that's a possibility. And we got Tails. So we'll see exactly what my opponent's able to do. They have zero cards left in deck. So this is either the turn where I win the game or I lose the game. Do they have access to Switch? Okay, so there's a giant hearth. Now they just need two energies to get the Dedenne out of the active spots. It's taken me a lot of time. I feel bad that I've taken so much time from my opponent. But I did um, 
I am trying to explain a video and it's hard to play and explain at the same time while making it fairly competent and easy to digest. So let's see exactly how um, my opponent reacts to the situation. You can okay, so that's a boss's orders. Do they have the switch? They might just be upset that I've taken so much time and they have the switch, so they're going to try to waste up more time with me, which I mean, at that time, it's 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 frustrating playing against a deck that takes away all your resources. Um, and again, this is such a... I, I feel like it's a very unfavorable matchup, especially if you're playing Sound of Scorch correctly. Um, so, I mean, you just got to wait here. And they can't draw a card for their turn, so they lose the game, so we met our win condition. So, crazy game, but we take those. So, we're going to see exactly how this game goes. I fully imagine that we're probably going to go first, especially if our opponent's playing Pikaram. Okay, we're going second, actually, which is kind of wild. Um, no basic Pokemon, which is great, because our hand is not particularly good. Um, I'm not entirely sure what our opponent's playing, but if they're playing Pikaram, they should just be going first here. Or, they should be going second here. Um, I mean, again, I'll start with the Snorlax. Go Snorlax, Boss, Galar, Mine, Lilies, Lilies, Gormandize. So our opponent's playing Pikaram. Um, obviously, they must be a little bit more... Uh, they might be a little bit inexperienced with the deck. Or it might just be the Pikaram League Battle deck now that I see the Jirachi. Um, it could also just be like a Scourge deck. I don't think a Scourge deck would actually choose to go first. I don't know what the Zigzagoon is here either. It's one of those... Uh, maybe maybe I'm <laughs> against like Desigoons or something like that. I'm not sure. Um, if it's Desi Goons, they have scoop up nets and all that good stuff. I'm not sure what, what deck our opponent's playing here. The Rosa tells me that they're playing <clears throat> Desi Goons. Now, if I'm playing against Desi Goons, I don't think our opponent's going to drop down a two prize card Pokemon. Yeah, but it's very, very fitting for it to be Desi Goons. I don't think they're dropping a two prize card Pokemon down. Um, so the goal here is probably going to be... Mallow and or, or not Mallow, uh, Mawile, Mawile to bring down something from their hands and trap it up in the active spot. They don't really have a lot of resources to get around things if if they just have a Pokemon that can't get out of the active spot. Um, I think Muck, Alolan Muck is going to be good here, or not Muck, Alolan Muck, just Alolan Muck. It's all the Pokemon names here, people. Don't blame me. Uh, yeah, I think we're just vibing out here. We probably don't want to play down both Lily's Poké Dolls. Maybe we do. Maybe our opponent can clear them out. So here at this point, there's probably not much that I want to do. I think I'm just going to go uh, Cynthia and Caitlyn. We're going to discard a boss's orders. I want to have a boss orders in the discard pile just so I can get back um, if I need to. I think there's much that I want to do here. This was just not a great turn. And that's what you're going to get with these control decks sometimes. It, it can get a little bit ugly. Um, I'm going to go Surprise Box. Just putting the Rosa back in my opponent's hands. They're not going to use the Rosa here. And we're just going to use Gormandize. The Surprise Box could be good in the future, maybe. Um, the one thing that's going to hurt here is that this deck does not play Mew. I think the deck probably needs a Mew. Um, because the Decidueye player can just go 90, 20, 20 on the bench. So that's one thing that I think is going to eat us alive this game. Unless, of course, we can get a Maw while boss orders, run our opponent out of resources. Maybe they're not playing too many Switch. Maybe they are. Um, maybe it's just Scoop Up Nets. Um, they are playing different copies of Rowlets than I would play. I would play the Sky Circus one. So our opponent might just be playing a their kind of own homebrewed list, which is totally cool. Um, yeah, I just don't know if this is a particularly great matchup, unless, of course, they just play into it. The fact is, they might struggle against us, um, trying to find those rare candies and stuff like that, because we don't play the Rosa. They can't, they won't be able to play the Rosa, I should say. Okay, there's the energy. What's our opponent going to do? Just gonna pass cool and we got a koga's trap okay i'm gonna go boss orders just bring up the galarian zigzagoon i don't necessarily think it's great but uh we're just gonna go for it 
then of course i'm gonna go for uh gormandize to draw a card i think or actually maybe yeah i'm gonna go gormandize to draw a card the snack search i could wait until next turn um i'm gonna try to get our opponent to waste some scoop up nets at least that could be a way to win this game so if we just keep on using boss orders over and over again it should be okay but i don't know maybe uh the 90 20 20 is gonna add up a lot the Mew would be primo here, because then we could use Scoop Up Net of our own. So if you run into Desi Goons, I mean, it could get awkward. A lot of the top players are not playing Desi Goons right now, so they might not necessarily know how to play against Control. Um, but again, I think Control is one of those things. I think Control doesn't necessarily know how to play against every single deck. Um, usually the top decks get countered by Control decks when Control decks come out, and you often lose to the fringe matchups. So I think this might be one of the fringe matchups here um because currently i so far you can see i have no current win con but that's, like again like I, i'm here to show you the real and what's going on with the deck in a live like game um i like these i the last game i played was the first game that i played with this deck on the ladder i played against it a few times but it's one of those things where i just don't want it to be like zach doesn't know what he's doing or zach's just like saving the bad game stuff like that uh, that's that's the furthest thing from the case. So, um, we could save the Snorlax here. I, I probably want to. I could go Koga's Trap to stop the opponent for, like, a little bit extra. I think that might be fine. Maybe. Would only draw one card. Like, I don't like that it's only the one card, though. Oh, I have a Galar Mine in play, so I'm going to go for the Scoop Up Net. I don't like wasting that many Scoop Up Nets. It seems to be the casualty of this matchup. So there's another boss's orders. So, so far our opponent has used one Scoop Up Nets. So we'll see exactly, like, how this goes. Like, maybe I could run them out of resources enough. I just feel like their damage output is going to be pretty good. They might struggle to find energies as well. Gyratina, Scoop of Net, Aromatic Dark, or Aromatic Grass. It's really one of those matchups where I feel like it just might take a moment. Okay, so our opponent does play a Switch as well. Not that I wasn't expecting them to play a Switch, um, but there's a Switch and a Scoop of Net. I don't see any reason why they wouldn't even use Jirachi there, just to grab another resource out of their deck. To me, that seems like the really weird um, play. Maybe they just wanted to scoop up net, knock it on the doll. That's two scoop up nets, one switch. Let's just go ahead here with the Koga's Trap one more time. Our opponent still hasn't drawn enough prize cards in order to make a run at this. I'm going to go Quick Ball, discarding a Will. Um, I probably could have discarded the. I probably could have discarded the Giovanni. I'm gonna grab an Oracorio because our opponent did take the knockout on the Lily's Poke doll, so I will I will draw some extra cards here. Let's go ahead, put the Lily's Poke doll down here. Crushing Hammer. Heads would have been really hot there. Do I want to go Gormandize or not? I can go Snack Search and get a card back. I mean, Crushing Hammer might be fine, actually, on top of the deck if I can get that. I'm going to go Snack Search. It is what it is. You can't use Snack Search and Gormandize. It's one thing as well is, like, make sure you're planning that out because you don't want to be like, oh, I need to draw cards or, oh, I need this specific card. Just want to make sure that that's a normal Grass Energy. But apparently it is. Maybe my opponent will just start going for the flip. It's it's not the worst. Start doing damage to this <laughs> Decidueye. Knock it, knock it right out, right? So we're still vibing here. Um, I don't see what I want to do. I'm fine to put another Snorlax down. I think that's probably fine. Four, five, six. I don't want to bring something back out. I want our opponents to try to get out of it with this scoop up net switch combination to me that sounds like it's very good um so i'm gonna go ahead here and go um snack search again 
And then we're going to get another Tails. So yeah, I definitely should have discarded the Giovanni's Exile instead of the Will. Because that turn I could have played a Will. And the Will would have got me a heads to get me back a card. So that's my mistake. But this is where decks like this become a struggle. Because micro, micro decisions really add up. But sometimes you got to stay in games, and the thing that makes it very difficult is if you're playing in any of these tournaments, you got to determine, like, in a best of one game, you can see that the game has been going on for, like, 10 minutes. Most ratches are, like, 25 minutes. By the time you finally get set up, it's maybe about 20 minutes. So we're, like, halfway done a tournament match. But when our opponent's, like, just absolutely taking that poison damage, that's spooky for them, for sure. Um, I'm actually just going to go... I don't know how I even want to handle this. Um, if I could get an energy, I would definitely just attack with the A palm. But no access to the energy. Um, I'm going to put Mewtwo down on the deck. I'm going to grab the Cynthia and Caitlyn so I can get back another supporter for next turn. There's no point in me playing down another um, card here at all. And I want our opponent to go after to try to get the knockout here. Um, so I'm just going to... Actually, I don't even know if I want to go ahead... I'm either drawing a prize card or I'm snack search and getting heads. I'm going to go snack search. And I am going to grab a crushing hammer just because I can crushing hammer away things if they bench something else. So let's see if our opponent does not. Our opponent, if they leave the Decidueye up active, it's actually just going to get knocked out um, from poison damage. Unless, of course, they play something around it. So far, they've already played two scoop of net and a switch. So maybe the Coco's Trap is really just helping. Um, no aromatic grass energy stopping that special condition. So really just one of these games where we vibe. But the biggest thing to take away is games are long. Games are very stressful. I mean, if you ask me if I'm stressed right now, I'm not really stressed. I'm just playing what's given in my hands. Would I love to be using Alolan Muck? be ripping away the top of their deck every turn yeah it's just something that's not happening here another good thing about Mew if there's any damage you could always hit things for 30 especially if they're not attacking so you could draw prize cards so I mean I think Mew sounds like a really good call on a deck like this did the opponent grab nothing interesting Okay, um, I think I'm just going to vibe because right now there's two switch, there's two scoop of nets. Um, I don't want to go crushing hammer right now. I think crushing hammer would be quite a poor decision. Um, I know the top card of my deck is the Cynthia and Caitlyn. And I don't really want to put anything else there. Um, it just, do I want to play a scoop of net to try to get my Cynthia Caitlyn a turn earlier? I mean, I don't know. I don't think so. Um, I think this is really just a turn where I pass. Or actually, this is a turn where I just go boss. And now I'm going to go for the Gorman dies. So the reason why I went boss there is because I don't want my opponent to draw into the switch. I'd rather have a few more turns because I could actually start milling their switches. This might prevent them from getting that switch, that scoop of net, and starting to attack. Um, the Koga's Trap could be cool. There's a few things that, like, could work. Um, but the Scoop of Net switch is definitely going to be the biggest thing. I also don't think my opponent runs Aurora Energy or anything like that. But yeah, they just started to pass. It was like, wait, what? <laughs> Where's the card that I just drew? Um, in terms of prize, I'm just going to discard the Giovanni's Exile. I don't think the Giovanni's Exile... Actually, it could be helpful. I can always get it back. I don't need to worry about it. I'd rather have it in the discard pile and have access to uh, boss's orders at this point. I'm not too worried about the Koga's Trap. I now think with the amount of prize cards my opponent's drawn, which is zero, um, I'm at a point where even if my opponent has Scoop of Net, I'm probably okay. Um, I am going to go Pokemon Communication, putting the A-Palm away. And the A-Palm's going to go away for an Alolan Grimer. So I want to get that down onto the bench. I am going to go for the Crushing Hammers at this point. So I'm going to take away a Grass. I'm going to go Crushing Hammers again. So Tails, that sucks, whatever. Um, let's go Scoop Up Net on the Snorlax. Sending up. 
a Snorlax right here. I'm gonna go, this goes down. And I think I almost wanna go like, snack search for an Alolan Muck. Well, snack search for a Pokemon communication that could be an Alolan Muck. I think I have the time. So yeah, the heads is fine there. Next turn I can get the Alolan Muck going off. Um, that will definitely free up some of my resources. Maybe I could rip some of those switch um, scoop up net cards. I don't think my opponent has them in their hands. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if they just went pass again. Because I'd have to have a scoop up net. Like, I think if they had it, they've used enough scoop up net and switches where they'd probably just use it. Maybe they'll go like rare candy 30 to his Lily's Polka Doll or something like that. I'm not sure. I'm really not sure. Okay, so I am going to go for this, putting this away, and I do want to rip some of those things to shreds. Either my opponent's just, like, waiting for me to do this, and then they're going to play their scoop of nets, because uh, they're trying to bait me for not playing a reset stamp, but they might not know exactly. Like, I'm going to go based off my opponent's earlier plays, that they do not know what they're doing against this deck. No offense at all, I mean, not everyone knows what they're playing against when it's a new control deck. So let's go for the Alolan Muck and try to rip their top six cards of their deck. So scoop up net there is hot. Um, I almost want to give leave them the rare candy, but I'm fine at this point. I'd rather them almost not get another Obstagoon or another Decidueye. Um, <clears throat> I am going to go scoop up net on to the muck again. And here it's really one of those things where do I want to use Gormandize or not? I think I just want to keep on using uh, Snack Search to get back scoop up nets for the foreseeable future. So I'm going to go Snack Search. I'm going to get back the Scoop Up Net. We're getting a little bit lucky on the Snack Search. But I mean, when you're just using Coin Flips every single turn, you can put luck back in your favor. I played Floor just for like the longest time um, last year. And Floor just was really a Coin Flip based deck, but you just kept, kept on going through the motion. So my opponent's active is going to have three Retreat costs. As long as they're not going like Rare Candy... Um, Obstagoon or attacking, it should be okay. So let's go and hit with the Alolan Muck. There's nothing there, no! Uh, what could be hiding away? I'm gonna go back with the Alolan Muck here. Like, they obviously just don't have it, right? Like, there's just no way that they have it. So I'm just going to go Snack Search again. I'm going to keep on going back for the same strategy. I want my opponent to retreat because I could just boss his orders up something after they retreat. And it looks like they're not, like, playing anything from their hand. Like, I can continuously do this over and over. They have three scoop-up nets, two switches. And at some point, I think I want to lock the Jirachi in the active spots. To me, that seems like the best opportunity. I don't know what the boss's orders there is for. I'd rather the Mewtwo be in the active spot. I'm not using Gormandize anyways. I also just put a scoop of net on top of my deck. So I'm going to go Alolan Muck again. Just trying to rip. I'm going fishing. There's nothing there. And the rest of the cards get shuffled back in. So it makes me wonder, like, I don't want to reset stamp my opponent. I am just going to go with the Alolan Muck again. So you can see I'm just keep on fishing right now. Um, my opponent continuously is drawing cards. There's a Tails. I don't think my opponent's going to be, like, waiting for a Tails. So, we'll see exactly, like, what my opponent's doing here. Okay, so they do have the Scoop Up Net there. And that is going to be their last Scoop Up Net of the game. So they only have two Switch. So let's see what our opponent does here. There's a 10 on the Lily's Poke at all. I'm actually fine with them knocking at the Lily's Poke at all because it still counts for Dance of Tribute. Finally drawing some prize cards. And I'm assuming the Munchlax is also going to take some damage. But to me, this is completely fine. Tina's not going to matter too much. 
I do want to go... Before I do anything, I might as well just draw some cards with Oracorio GX. Because there's nothing in my hand that can change anything else. Um, Supporter-wise, I actually don't know if there's anything that I want to play um, for my hands. My opponent has been, like, really weird with the cards that they've been playing and the way that they've been playing them. I'm not saying my opponent's playing weird or anything like that, but we're going to try the Alolan Muck one more time. It's another rare candy. So far, like, it just seems like my opponent just has none of these cards left in deck, nor do they play a Stadium card. So I'm just going to bring up the Jirachi, and I think if I keep on bringing up the Jirachi, now it's just, like, a switch away um, from actually just mattering. So here... I feel pretty confident that I can just go snack search. I'm going to search for a scoop of nets. Try to rip their trainer cards away. And that's fine. I'm fine getting a tails because it... I'm fine getting a tails there. That's fine. Because I, I have a bit of time here left in the game. And we'll see exactly how my opponent handles this. Maybe they're going to be like... Oh, cool. I'm just going to bring up... I'm going to grab my Dedenne GX now. And that's something that i just much rather see. Um, and their Stellar Wish is also going to be start to take away resources out of their deck. There can't be too, too much left in their deck here. And they're just going to concede because they don't have anything left. They probably prized their other two switch. Honestly, in most of my videos lately, I've been trying to do three games. But the fact that both of those games took 50 minutes, I don't know if either of, if any one would want to watch an extra like 20 minutes of gameplay. I think the two games that we played kind of got the gist of like putting your opponent in a deck out scenario. And then kind of like what I was talking about, like my opponent, I, I played the game appropriately. My opponent conceded when it they just had when they were frustrated with the game state or ran out of resources, whatever made them decide to concede. So again, um, just a t like thing, do not ask your opponent to concede when you're playing this. I know that there's some timed games and stuff like that. It's just not cool. Um, I know that some opponents will play slow. If there's any issues, just talk to a judge or something like that. I'm sure things get cleared up. Maybe you'll get a time extension. Maybe your opponent will get talked to. Um, but the deck is a little bit slow to play, so watch out for that um, when you're playing in the tournament. Um, no matter how you play it or how you play it, like, a lot of things are decided um, kind of as you're going along. As you can see, like, there was a lot of plans where I'm like, cool, I don't care if I get heads or tails. I just have to see if my opponent would pass. Um, so games, like, when it's just going to be pass thinking after 30 seconds, pass thinking after, like... It's, it's going to take a while to play those decks. So don't play it for the Players' Cup. I think the deck's pretty cool. Um, is it undiscovered? Yeah, it's... I mean, it's one of those things where I think a lot of top players will have a game plan against it. Um, a lot of average players or anything like that might now have a game plan against it. So I think as the deck continuously gets discovered, uh, it's probably not going to be the greatest play. But give it a try if you're looking to improve your play style, your sequencing, your thought process. It kind of allows you to be like, it's a blank canvas each game. You got to come up with a strategy on the go, depending on what your opponent's doing. Looking through your opponent's discard pile, checking through your prize cards, things like that. Like there's a lot of cool things that you could do with this deck that will really help you improve as a player, even if the deck is not the most successful deck. Um, that being said, if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. I mean, it's one of those things where I'm on the road to a thousand subscribers so if you could help me out if not that's all cool too glad you watched up until this point uh, i do have to create some more content so i will catch up with all of y'all next time but stay tuned for the next video on the loan bond thanks again have a great one peace out really hope that you enjoyed watching that video i totally enjoyed making it if you enjoyed it be sure to like the video share the video with everyone that you know and subscribe to the channel as well. Totally appreciate all the support. we got a lot of cool things happening on the channel, so stay tuned for more. Be sure to check out the social links in the description. Thanks, and have yourself a great one.